Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex. And today I want to bring a top 30 uniform list to you. I've been thinking about it and it makes a lot of sense since you guys really enjoy doing the top 30 character snapshot that I also do one for uniforms. We have a sale on right now for the next two days, so it's a perfect time to do so. It was a lot harder for me to choose the top 30 uniforms, so I do expect some controversy and some disagreement in the chat and in the comments below. That's fine. Just be civil about it when you give me your creative criticism and your constructive ideas for what should be changed. But let's dump, jump into the first iteration of this list as we work towards it. Before we discuss why each character was ranked where they were, we've got to talk about how I came to this conclusion because if your way of gauging uniform value is different than mine, of course you can come up with a different list. I decided to base it on three out of four factors. The first one is how good the uniform makes the character. So in essence, it, how, how much of a leap does the uniform uh, give the character? So a great example of this would be anti-venom. The classic uniform or the classic look for venom is horrible. He's like an D tier hero, but when he equips the anti-venom uniform, he becomes an S rank or an A rank hero. So this is a huge leap for the character in terms of their potential damage, survivability, everything. This is the works. This is a full facelift. The second thing I considered was how good the character was, period, after the uniform. So Anti-Venom does become a reasonable character on the fringes of the meta with this uniform. However, another example would be someone like uh, Angela. Angela's uniform does take her from zero to hero, much like Venom and Anti-Venom, but she's still nowhere near the meta. She's still a very underused glass cannon character with zero survivability, so that's going to make that's going to you know give her a hit and make her a lot lower on my list. The last thing I took into consideration was the secondary rewards. We do have quite a few uniforms now that either enable uh, event battles or they give you uh, um, bonuses from and extra items from the cinematic battle and potentially some to come with Black Panther and the update there. The last thing that I could have considered that I didn't was uh, secondary uniform options. So for example, uh, Wolverine, if you're getting this uniform and you want to make it mythic, you're going to need to get Iron Man, Karnak, Red Hulk, Winter Soldier, and Thanos. If I had more time and if I had a better way of organizing the data, I could cross-reference good uniforms to see which ones also popped up as uniform options, which would increase their value exponentially. For example, physical attack is great for Wolverine, so it's good to have Thanos if you're getting Wolverine. If you're getting Thanos, it's also good to have Kid, Kaiju, and Iron Man. So you can kind of work your way backwards looking at it that way, but it was a bit too much to consider for 30 different uniforms because that's 150 options. So we're going to have to skip that one for now. But let me know if there's any really good ones that I missed that apply to multiple different uniforms like Angela's or Winter Soldier's. But let's look at the list again and discuss it from top to bottom. Number one, I think, has to be Ragnarok Hulk. Hulk is a decent character without his uniform, but he becomes an absolute monster. Very capable of inserting himself into the meta with this uniform. Uh, in addition to that, you also get a CTP of refinement for getting it to Mythic. So it's a win-win-win, and he's a beloved character, and he's basically unkillable with this uniform. So I did, had a hard time putting anyone above Hulk for this uh, change. All of his skills change, he gets immunity, it's just the works. Next up we have Spider-Man, and he could probably be argued to have the first spot, but I think Spider-Man is a little bit more reliant on the enemy team not having web immunity. With web immunity, Spider-Man loses a lot of his value, but this uniform is fantastic. It doesn't jump the hero up as much as Hulk's, for example, because it only really changes two of his skills. I know it says three, but it's really only two, uh, and it's really only one major change with his fourth skill, Web Fling. And so with that being said, that's why I thought he was a little bit worse off than Hulk, and he also doesn't give you a CTP for getting his uniform to Mythic. Number three, similar to Hulk, Loki gets a huge bump in terms of damage and survivability with the extra iframe with this uniform. And then you also get a card, although it's not the best one, it is still a pretty decent semi-premium card for completing his uh, uniform upgrades. Then we have Thanos, Civil or Secret Wars, uh, a more expensive, one of the most expensive uniforms to be honest, but it's a very, very good one. And if you have Thanos and if you've already worked on him, this is an investment worth making because of how monstrous it makes him. It makes him way tankier and it also doubles his damage. The, the beam, the fourth skill, just bonkers upgrade for him. Number five, a little bit controversial. I'm not sure where to put him, but I thought 
it's a pretty decent option for Doctor Strange. I think a lot of people forget the bonuses that the uh, uniform gives him. It gives him a, a health recovery plus a reflect. That's offense and defense rolled into one. So that's a pretty big deal. And that's for five seconds reflect with a one second cooldown. So he can basically have 40% reflect up all the time. And that's a pretty big deal uh, in the game as it is. And in addition, you have to take into consideration that it gives him 20% all attack and all defense. The all defense really helps out with his low defense and his fragile uh, character base. And then it's also only a 750 uniform. Despite the fact that it has so many good effects, it's still one of the OG uniform prices, so you don't have to pay extra for it. Number six, probably the one I'll take the most heat for, but I really have a lot of good things to say about tight leather jean Cyclops. See what I did there? Uniform makes him a villain, which makes him so good for Shadowland. It really boosts his damage up, and it makes his passive better, which makes him a viable leadership option, even in Extreme Alliance Battle. So it basically hits all of the bells. He's good in pretty much all PvE content, and he's actually not bad in PvP content because of Laser Point Strike. He can surprise you in a lot of ways with that ignore targeting, like a mini Nova. So... I think Cyclops, a lot of people are sleeping on him with this uniform, or they just really hate Scott Summers. Next up, we have Anti-Venom. I've already talked about him and why he's so great. Next up, we have Thor Ragnarok at number 8. I'm here, I'm putting him here primarily because of the card that he gives you, which is one of the best cards in the game. I'm a little bit sad that his damage fell off so much after they changed and fixed Conjure Lightning. A little bit disappointed in that, but he still gains massive survivability from this uniform, and it's a huge jump from his original uh, look, and that's why it's got to be on this list in the top 10. Number 9 is a character that, frankly, I don't think needs a uniform, but when she gets it, oh boy, does she transform. Sharon Rogers. She's a beast without it, so she doesn't gain as much as some other characters do by getting their uniform and equipping it, but she just becomes an even stronger monster. She does way more damage with the tw plus 20 all attack and the extra stats, her skills become much more difficult to deal with, with the iframes in between, with the vortex skill on her fifth, uh, with freedom strike, and the ignore defense, or the ignore dodge is super useful for high level PvP play against your Quicksilvers, and in world boss ultimate, and even against Quicksilver world boss. Number 10 on the list is one that I haven't been able to play with until recently, but I really think Inferno's uniform is very, very good. And it synergizes so well with his hot streak passive by giving him the buff and the heal that will tick twice. So he can heal for almost 10,000 health when you build him up properly, uh, and it turns into a pretty formidable offense-defense kind of character because he gets 18% max HP popping every 5 seconds. So it's really not bad. It's quite good. And his damage, of course, as we know, always off the charts and actually better now with the extra 20% attack and the stats rolled into that. Iron Fist coming in at number 11 with the Netflix uniform, a very high level jump for the character. His base kit is disgusting so bad, but when he gets the uniform he turns into an absolute hero. He just suffers from the Angela syndrome where he's just a little bit too far out of the meta, probably like rank 50-60. Uh, out of all characters, so he can't be that high on the list, but it's a very strong uniform for its uh, skill changes. The effect, we know what it is, it's the same on all of his uniforms. It's not that great anymore with the pierce, but it's nice until you get some obelisk rolls going and you can build up your base of invincibility obelisks. Number 12, Hulk, or Red Hulk rather, from Marvel now. Uh, pretty decent uniform for a character that definitely needs one. Base kit is sorely lacking. He's all offense, no defense. This one brings a lot of defense. Immu immunity on his third skill, healing, just overall a very good option uh, and one that really takes the character to the next level. Number 13, not one that you're going to like per se, Wolverine. It does enable you to get the last uh, node in for the uh, Laura Kinney X-23 event battle so if that ever comes back it's worth it to have this one yes it's more expensive yes it looks ugly but it does give him 15 percent damage reduction which is meaningful considering he's often put up against the likes of quicksilver and nova and he doesn't want to get one shot despite the fact that omega cannon looks silly it actually does a ton of damage and his skills do flow more nicely with the jump forward and the jump back and the extra stats as we know are always good especially for native tier 2 characters next up we have hella a lot of people are going to say that they wanted her higher on this list but she just fell off people used her for about a month and they just stopped she still doesn't have enough survivability even with the iframes even with the immunity it's just not enough for her she still dies 
The only saving grace is that it does make her much more usable and she's much more fun. Looks much cooler, and then the most important part, you get a CTP of energy for mythicking her uniform. That's the only reason why, in my opinion, she's this high on this list. Otherwise, I would have put her around 28, 29, uh, right at the bottom. Then we have, in the middle of the pack, Satana. A lot of people really like this uniform. They're ranking it a lot higher in their personal tables, and I know why, but I'm ranking it based on the options that I gave you at the beginning of the video. So it is a good uniform, uh, but it just exacerbates and it amplifies the uh, problem that she needs guard break immunity and without guard break immunity even with this uniform you can get punished but it does boost her damage to an insane amount so keep that in mind uh, when you're picking up the character that it doesn't fix all of her problems it gives her more healing and gives her way more damage in AoE but then you do need to protect her with guard break or else she's still gonna get punished Next, we have Yondu, Guardians of the Galaxy 2. A lot of people just forgot about Yondu. We had a whole whack of speed heroes coming out, one right after the other, and Yondu got lost in the shuffle, but his uniform really improves the character. Try it out. Go equipping the no mohawk Yondu, and you'll see just how much worse he is compared to where he is now with the big fin. And it's crazy. He's a much, much better character, much more fluid, way better damage, more survivability, iframes, the works. Number 16 and 17, Elsa and Sif pretty much have the same thing going on. Without their uniforms, they're not bad characters, but they get a huge facelift from their skills. With their uniforms, Sif gets the immunity and five skills changed. Elsa gets the change to energy damage with her ult, like her fifth skill, and she also gets all five of her skill animations changed from her base model. So total facelifts for good characters that are good to begin with. Number 18, we have Ghost Rider, his original form with the Adelon Rising uniform. This is here because of the change to getaway car. Three seconds immunity with a four second cooldown. Yes, please. Makes the character usable, uh, where, whereas his base uniform basically does not make him usable at all. Number 20, I might get some questions from this one, Vulture. And the only reason why he's not higher up on the list, I know he's a great character with his uniform, but he's just not that bad without his uniform. The uniform doesn't do... Uh, enough for the character compared to something like anti-venom compared to some of these other changes like iron fist it does do five skill changes but he has the same iframes and similar damage without his uniform yes he does more damage to hero types so it might seem like he's doing a lot more damage but if you put him against villains you'll see that there's not a huge gap between his damage with and without the uniform it's definitely good and cool ghoul but it's just not enough to push him above rank 20 in my opinion at 21, we have Beast, a character that I foolishly mythicked the uniform for way too early and then ended up regretting it. Good uniform, not worthy of the mythic, but it does make him stronger. It enhances the effect of scientific mind. It gives him uh, some extra damage on his first skill, and it makes his fourth skill better, although it looks exactly the same. Um, and then it does make him a villain, which is the same tag that... I gave for Cyclops with his uniform and why it makes it so good. And the extra leadership damage is also nice for physical types. At number 22, I wanted to put him higher, but I just couldn't find the justification for it. Falcon with his newest uniform. This one is very, very good for the character. It definitely boosts him up way higher on the tier list than any of these previous uniforms could do for him. So they finally got it right. He's just too far away from the meta, even with these changes, to be you know, one of your most sought after uniform purchases. Then we have Destroyer and Luke Cage. I put Destroyer and Luke Cage near each other because they do similar things uh, with Reflect and their uniforms basically just enhance that duty. They're not gonna make them better characters in any other way. So if you're not purchasing Luke Cage's uniform or uh, Destroyer's uniform for the Reflect meta and kind of to play that game, you should probably skip them over entirely because they're just there to counter specific characters that only deal physical damage or only deal energy damage. Then at number 25, we have Silk, and it's basically all about cr crowd control for her. Two extra seconds on her webbing means that you can have characters webbed up indefinitely. You have five seconds or four seconds and four seconds with multiple skills, which just makes it insane. You've got three seconds here, which, yeah, jumps up to five, and then three, yeah, you got 10 seconds of webbing. Good night, you're done. Shadowland becomes autoplay with Silk involved. 26 and 27, I put Groot and Star-Lord. For Groot's case, 
it makes him a lot better because it changes around all of his skills it makes his healing a lot better he's just fallen out of use entirely Groot used to be a mainstay in this game and I haven't seen a Groot in the game in any game mode in like more than a month try and think back to the last time you saw Groot on any team hard to find so that's why he's so low on the list but the uniform for him specifically is very good because it does all those things that I talked about in Star Lord's case it doesn't make Star Lord that much better they did improve his uniform by giving the fourth skill change that doesn't apply to his whole character I'm looking at my tier twos I've never tier two Star Lord and I never will the uniform does have improvements now because of celestial power but you're mainly purchasing the uniform for the leadership ability and what it does and that's why this one is a lot lower on the list than Beast it doesn't have the same flexibility of villain tag and energy damage is much easier to come by in a leadership than uh, physical damage is for those types. Finally, the last three on the list, we have Gwenpool, Kid Kaiju, and Angela. We already talked about Angela. Gwenpool and Kid Kaiju. Gwenpool, you're buying it for the heels. It's a decent uniform, but, you know, Gwenpool just doesn't see enough play. And then Kid Kaiju's uniform is actually quite good because it solves the character's biggest weakness, which is survivability. It gives him a juicy 20% all defense in addition to other defensive uh, stats that you can roll, like max HP, which benefits smasher which is his summon it also makes his summon better it also gives you more damage because hivo comes out and then of course the plus 15 all attack all defense to smasher just further propagates that uh, kind of defensive strategy that you're looking for with kid kaiju because you're just trying to survive long enough to kill them because he's squishy so that is the top 30 list for uniforms let me know what you guys think of my top 30 let me know which ones you would change or which ones you would make different or if some are too high some are too low same kind of criticisms as i look for in the meta snapshot for characters this is my first time doing it guys so be gentle subscribe if you enjoy the content and you want to support me and of course if you like what you see i hope to see you again tomorrow take care